a few other comments on this. Somebody was asking if we keep introducing air, will the pump stop working? Well, you can see there, <laughs> it's mostly air. All of the water has been pushed out and it's clearly still working. I would venture to say that our efficiency has actually increased at pumping capacity because all of this water that gushes in has to go somewhere and it has inertia and friction and all sorts of other things to deal with. But if it can run in here and see air, which poses no effective resistance, then that slug of water moving through can more easily be accommodated after the backflow preventer. So it's, it's actually uh, beneficial to have a larger just air chamber. And yes, you could probably like, if you had this running at high enough pressure, you could siphon off some of this air kind of like a Tromp pump, T-R-O-M-P-E, which is kind of this style of pump that just creates air pressure using water. And we can see that it's pretty much down into my connector here, and I imagine that there will be an interface down here eventually. I'm recording this video now because I'm about to run out of water. I have a IBC tote up the hill to supply with it, me with water, and I can run this about four hours on that, and then it takes overnight to fill up just using the spring water, because it's the middle of summer and our the spring flow is just not very much. Uh, another comment I forgot to mention is that it's tilted up. So let me put the phone about level. There's level. And so any air that goes in the snifter valve will want to travel up this way instead of how I had it before, it would travel back towards the waste valve. So it does need to be tilted. Um, there's another pump called the Brewer, I think B-R-E-U-E-R -E -E pump, that instead of a pressure chamber, the pump dumps directly into um, what would be a large diameter hose that's full of air. And if you had a snifter valve, that hose would be full of air at the top. So you could almost have, or you literally could have, this one-way check valve dumping into air. So there's no no inertial resistance for that air to dump or for that water to dump into something. Whereas normally like a, a ram pump, it would have to push and displace all of the water that would be in this, or if you had an air bladder, um, displace all the air or displace all the water. And so that water that's sitting in here has inertia and it doesn't want to move but you're trying to force more water in, which is trying to move that. Um, but so now, if it's just air, there's less inertia fighting against it. All right, uh, so that's a, a fin final comment, kind of. Oh, another thing, this is my uh, simulated backflow, or not backflow, uh, back pressure simulator. Simulated backflow simulator, yeah. I said it twice. Um, but the way this is designed is that the water coming out of the pump goes in there and it has to create a column of water and then it trickles down here and that col another column of water and then it trickles down. And at the bottom of each one I can tap off of these and at different head resistances, uh, delivery heights, I can actually get a flow rate. So that's kind of how I designed this. Um, it works for lower flow rates, or lower delivery heights, up to about 20 feet, because there's 25 feet here, but as you add more, it compresses the air that's in here, so you get less and less effective back pressure as you build it larger. Um, so I could measure, you know, that one's kind of redundant, but I can just drain that side, so I can get flow off there, 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 there and then obviously flow out of here, and it's it's primed, literally primed and ready to go with uh, more if this series continues, and we want to see it expanding and growing into uh, new unlimited labor, or unlimited 
bounds. Okay, uh, I don't have my dog around here to say, or to file my dog tax. Bye.